Here's Carroll. Quick shot off the catch. Pretty. That's a three. He's got 13 in the game. Well, you called it, Terry, at halftime. You thought J.C. Carroll was going to heat up and really bring this ball club, put him on his back like he has done all season long. Foul along the baseline on the drive, and that's on Chris Clark, his first. Watch the footwork of J.C. Carroll. This is what allows him to get the shot off. Bang, bang. One, two, quickly up. No wasted motion in his jumper. And Reggie Theus doesn't like it, but Reggie Theus knows himself as a scorer and shooter. Very difficult to stop a young man from getting his point. He's had great games against New Mexico State, too. 44 points earlier this season in one of the matchups, and he had 30 in the other. So he's averaging about 37 against them this year. And you had the one game last year in this building, another game during the regular season, and the two in the conference. He's averaging almost 30 in this building. Spicer heating up a bit as well beyond the arc. It's a five-point game. Stu Morrow up in Cherry. Chaz Spicer, that score that we talked about, second leading score for Utah State, has ice water in his veins. He loves it when the stakes are the highest. Clutch performer for Utah State. Hawkins wants the ball on the block at the other side. Throws it away. Good anticipation by Session. Chris Session, who came in, did a nice shot in the first half. And a better decision by Session to take care of the basketball. Utah State's been a little lax. He made sure they kept possession of the rock. Look for the post back door. It wasn't there. Good defense by New Mexico State. Hammer gets it out to Peterson. Justin Hawkins doing his best to try to be all in J.C. Carroll. Down low to Session. Somehow got it there. Spicer, five on the shot clock. Gets the roll. Chance Spicer makes it a three-point game. All of a sudden, a little cinnamon and parsley has shown up to the big dance here. Chance Spicer getting the ball on the offensive end. They were up by 14, it seems like just a moment ago. And the, the game in the regular season here, it took Utah State all of the second half to get back in the game. Right now, still a lot of, lot of time left. The push and the foul on Utah State as Hacha Lapasos comes into the game. Apostles coming in more of a defensive stalwart as opposed to Mark Eady, who can post up and score a little bit better in the post. But right now, Reggie Theus looking for that defensive minded lineup to slow down Utah State. Pete, the offensive foul. Carroll defended him well. Spicer taking over at the other end. Just committed his second foul on defense, but they leave him wide open. And he knocks down the three. He can also hit the mid-range jumper and the game winner. They got more than one option going down the stretch. Linda, thanks. Georgetown's a team that I don't think many want to play. They'll be the best number two seed in the tournament, I believe. And, uh, they've got four outstanding teams ahead of them, but they're right there and have all the ingredients led by Jeff Green to do some damage in the tournament. You know the other team that people are not going to want to see come up on the selection show next to their name is Southern Illinois. And they get after you. They just defend everywhere. Here's Carroll up and in out of the timeout. So it is a one-point game for the championship of the WAC. If I'm New Mexico State, one, you have to get stops because that allows them to get on the break. But you got to get Justin Hawkins involved. Here he is on cue. Hammer trying to defend. Nelson crossover, and he's fouled by Spicer, and that's his third. Well, Nelson, Tyrone Nelson from New Mexico State, so difficult to defend because he's so unorthodox. He's got these long strides, and when he catches it, just don't know what he's going to do. He goes twice as long with that one stride as you're normally used to from anyone else. And Spicer will take a seat, and Stephen Ducharme comes in off the bench. You can see Stu Morrow talking to his player, and I, I believe one of the things he is saying is that Nelson had to hit a jumper all night, back up and let him shoot over the top. The foul over the back on Hacha Passos. Passos and Edie split time in the post for New Mexico State. And Reggie Thea saying 
Apply the pressure, fellas. Full court press. That's how they got the early lead in this one. Well, you can see Jason Carroll trying to work the middle. Once they get it past the first level, they want to try to get the ball to Carroll. Walking violation. And Stu Morrow can't believe it, and I must admit, I'm not sure I saw that either. It was knocked out of Deshaun's hands. I saw a push in the back that yeah. looked like it was, uh, there must have been a lot of bodies in front of the officials down there along the baseline to not see it. But for the most part, they've done an outstanding job of allowing this game to be physical and, and allowing the players to play. Yeah. Until the last couple of minutes, there weren't many whistles in this one. Chris Session picked up his first on the reach from behind. Ted Nauber comes into the game, and Fred Pete takes a seat. Fred Pete not happy to be going back to that bench, but his ankle, I talked to him before the game, he said it was about 70%, but he just doesn't have the movement nor the strength that he would normally have. Yeah, he was on the all newcomer team, all defensive team. That's what they really miss from him is his defense. He averaged about 10 a game throughout much of the season. So some pretty good offensive output too. Well, this young man with the ball has been quiet as well. We mentioned it last night, a season high of 26, and he's hit a couple shots, but he hasn't looked for his offense as much as he did last night. Hammer locked it from behind. Here comes Peterson. The double team and Duchamp. Nice catch. Gathers himself off the glass and in. And guess what? Utah State, which was down 17. They were down 14 just a few minutes ago. They've got a one-point lead. And Reggie, who's been as animated as we've seen him throughout the season, starts to worry a little bit. Well, you look at Utah State. They're pushing the ball once again. This is what got them back in the game. Peterson picking up the rock. Nice find to Charm, and, and that's, that's bench press work right there, partner. Nice pass. Takes the contact up off the glass. Stephen Descharm. Good work on the interior. And there are some Utah State fans here. They go everywhere, actually. I had a couple of the Big West Championship games where they, they used to pack a place in Anaheim, and their fans travel. And I tell you what, their home court, the Spectrum, is one of the best in college basketball. Very difficult to go in there and sneak a, sneak a victory. Remember, they pulled off that. Uh, I call it an upset over Nevada because Nevada obviously was the top seed, a top 10 team throughout right. the year, one of the best players in college basketball, Nick Fasikas. But Utah State actually beat him twice in a span of eight days. They beat him at the other, end of the regular season as well. And by the same score and by Chaz Spicer hitting two free throws in both games. They struggled down the stretch and lost three of their last four regular season games, but now have turned it on. We'll see what Thea set up in the huddle. It's like they're going to go to Edie in the block and look Hope that they double team him to present open shot. Ingram with the miss, tipped out. That was awfully close. Go over and back. Here's the double and the trap. This is where you have to be careful with Utah State getting spread defensively. The foul, the bucket doesn't go. So Chris Session picked up the foul, his second. You saw Nelson there once again going to his offhand, going as strong left as he does right. That's what makes him such a difficult guard. Nelson. Ties it up. So we are tied with 928 left here in Las Cruces, New Mexico, the Pan American Center, Terry Gannon along with Stephen Bardo, the championship of the WAC on the line and the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Nevada is already going from the WAC. Who else will join? The trap and the full court pressure. Well, and these guys don't look real confident handling the basketball against this pressure either. And that's why right there, that's the result, Nelson. Ingram buried it. Stu Morrow's going to have to get Chris Clark back in the game in a hurry. They want to beat this pressure 